let's talk a little bit about ME in the brain. The, you may have heard the term gray matter and white matter. Gray matter in the brain is the part of the brain that has the most dense uh, uh, the, the uh, presence of cell bodies, of the neurons, and that's what makes it look darker. I have a picture, you can tell me how this looks. Here's a cross-section of a brain, and you may be able to see that the outer part of the brain is gray and the inner part of the brain is white. So white matter is the more inner part of the brain, and it looks white because of myelin. And myelin is the coating on the nerve axons. So the, the thinking part of the brain is more in the periphery, and then the axons of those neurons come to the center and pass through some important places in the midbrain, down the spinal cord, and out to the body. It's interesting because in the spinal cord, it's the reverse, is the white matter is on the outside and the gray matter is on the inside because those are the tracks going out to the body. So the, the tracks that communicate to send the electrical signal uh, are what the white matter is in the brain. And this relates to ME in, uh, in an interesting way, and that is the clinical presentation of ME in general is not, doesn't directly impact cognition in the same way dementia it, it occurs, but there's more of a slowing or fatiguing uh, aspect of cognition. So it's almost as though the brain, the, the signals have to pass through the inflamed part of the brain and the signal becomes delayed or disrupted uh, as it goes through. That's my own way of explaining it. Um, but the white matter also uh, has the center area of the brain that, that where uh, pain and intense emotion, the autonomic nervous system, and the neuroendocrine system are located, which are very important for function of the body. And depending on where the neuroinflammation occurs, you could have a different presentation uh, of illness. There are a number of illnesses we're familiar with that are probably illnesses of neuroinflammation as well. And those illnesses would be multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's as three of the more common uh, illnesses. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease that, has, uh, that is more in the periphery as opposed to in the central nervous system with neuroinflammation. There are other things that can cause neuroinflammation, like traumatic brain injury. And even the process of aging is associated with progressive neuroinflammation. So it's an area that's very important. But each one of these illnesses has a different type or location or uh, a nature to the neuroinflammation. For example, um, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune or neuroimmune attack on the myelin sheath. Uh, specifically in patches through the white matter. But we know how to identify it, and we know uh, we can identify those antibodies. Um, Parkinson's disease, it has, uh, it has stages, but at least one of the major stages is degeneration or attack on uh, substantia nigra cells, which are responsible per for producing dopamine. So the illness is manifest as uh, low dopamine, as, as well as other things. And then... Um, uh, Alzheimer's, I think we don't understand totally, but there's probably the thinking is around abnormal function of glial cells in the presence of chronic inflammation. So uh, we have some clues about uh, pathophysiology of these other illnesses, but it's early. So the presentation of a neuroimmune illness depends on the mechanism and the place where the neuroinflammation develops. And that, in turn, affects the presentation of illness. So in Alzheimer's, there is a pronounced cognitive decline. In Parkinson's, there are symptoms related to low dopamine. And MS is somewhat random depending on where the demyelination occurs in the white matter, including in the spinal cord. 
Um, I just read a very interesting book called Brain on Fire. It's written by uh, Susanna uh, Kahalan. And it's her personal story of suddenly becoming severely uh, mentally ill. But the mental illness, which was initially thought to be a mental illness, uh, evolved into a severe neurologic illness that led was, was leading toward death. And fortunately, she was able to get a diagnosis, and her disease was an autoimmune attack against a specific receptor in the nervous system called NMDA receptors. That, and so the area of these NMDA receptors were located was the area of inflammation. And it happened to be in the area that created symptoms like schizophrenia or bipolar illness. Yet it was completely treatable and reversible. Uh, and she recovered and was able to come back and write the book. And the diagnosis of the illness was made by brain biopsy because she was about to die. And she finally found the right person who was able to put the clinical presentation of illness together, stage of illness, took a good history, pieced those together, related it to NMDA receptor function, and went ahead and did the brain biopsy and then was able to give the correct directed treatment. An important question is, do we have drugs or other kinds of treatments to repair the damage caused by neuroinflammation? And the answer is we probably uh, have some tools and have the potential to develop other tools. Now, some aspects of damage to the neuro nervous system are probably not reparable, but the inflammation could possibly be reduced. So the amount of damage that has occurred will determine uh, the reversibility of the neurologic uh, component of the illness. But that is the big question and the important field that lies ahead to try to understand more about neuro neuroinflammation. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube, tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar wvp.me-cvsvereniging.nl. Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.